Hey guys, doing a breakdown of one of my subscribers, Matt. Matt is the blue belt who just performed a very nice ankle pick. Rolling with a brown belt who appears to, for a majority of the round, be taking it quite easy. But still letting Matt get a lot of good work in and punishing him when some mistakes are being made. So here Matthew is keeping himself in pretty good alignment. Live toes. Starting to go dead toes there. Turns around really nicely to try and counter this Kimura. Now, Matt, you end up just sitting here on your butt after you fail to get to that arm bar, and your opponent just ends up turning up into you. So at that point, we should not have gone from a dominant position and then ended up on bottom. I would have preferred that once you realize the arm bar was failing, just perform a technical stand-up, stay up in side control. Here, trying to control, maybe threaten with triangle, half guard, Decent guard retention. You're managing the range very well here. You manage to establish double butterfly hooks. And then as your partner sits down, you make a good call of just basically performing a technical stand up into base and taking them over. So here you got a deep grip on the collar with your arm extended. And now this is where you make a bit of a screw up. You're holding, but your elbow is flared out when you're holding the leg. And so he's going to be able to pull that leg out and he doesn't get you with a triangle. But here he starts to kick the, the leg up and over. The arm bar is a threat because you were grabbing so deep with the collar. The triangle was a threat. If you had controlled, just keep that elbow really nice and tight and you wouldn't have had some of those issues. Here your center of gravity is a little too far forward because you're controlling that far leg. And so you see how far you gotta reach to control down at that ankle and how that's bending your spine forward. Shift your weight forward. And so what you should rather be looking at doing is trying to control that top leg or even towards the hips. This makes you light, and then he's able to get into this baby bolo position, and you try and twist, but he's got these hooks that are now acting as frames against your legs, and it's gonna cause you to get swept. All right, so let's talk about how north-south ended up going really south for you. So, here, as you started to get past, you were dropped down onto your left knee, your opponent was framing inside here, it looked like you are probably posted up on your right leg here. His left leg was fully extended, or at least knee on the ground, and this thing was up. So this is the leg that we gotta be really concerned about being able to establish that first uh, frame or butterfly hook underneath us. Now, you were leaning and framing all the way over onto the ankle. And so as I was pointing out, the difference of me here, where I have my center of gravity over top of my hips and making myself heavy, trying to push me right now, Kevin, much more difficult. As I lean forward, look what happens to my center of gravity, and my hips become much lighter. Oh, crap. Now, this is where that back take threat became as your opponent got to the baby bolo position. What I need to do is I need to look to try and keep my center of gravity back so I'm able to walk my hips back and secure north-south to make sure I stay in a dominant position. So, you ended up here. We need to correct this immediately. What I'm going to look to do is take my right hand and check it to his hip. I'm checking it to his hip and my elbow is framing on the inside of my hip here. So I'm creating a frame from my hip to his hip. So that if Kevin started pushing me down right now, he's just driving me into his own hip versus say me controlling somewhere like up here where I'm gonna still have the possibility of moving a bit. Depending on how engaged your opponent's top leg is here, you can absolutely grab this as well. So as I'm here, if this knee is really trying to drive into me, I grab here up at the toes, and now, I look to use this to control. What's good about this is that even if I can't move myself back, I can at least start getting Kevin's knee away from me. So try and get butterfly hooks in right now, Kevin. Even if I have to float further down here because I screwed up with my center of gravity, try and get those hooks, I'm gonna be able to still walk back. It's my body, my entire body weight against his arms. I need to make sure the legs don't get involved that I can beat this. So as we're here, I'm looking to get myself further back. I can even at this point just let go, bring myself back, and just be ready to check the legs here. So as he tries to invert, I bring the legs in. My goal from here is to block this and be able to start walking my hips back. So I frame to the hips. I'm gonna lift my hips up, drop my head down to Kevin's hips here, try and get your legs in, try and grab me. I flare my elbows if I need to to block his knees. And I walk my legs back so that you can see how I affect the structure of his arms so I can drop down into a north-south. So as I'm in this one last stage here, when I'm framing the hips and walking back, Kevin could still, if I have my knees, you know, my elbows super close, 
get frames established and be able to lift me here. I'm going to flare my elbows like this and track his legs so he's unable to establish any kind of control here. I keep my head to his hips that he can't mobilize. Because even if I'm doing this, if Kevin can lift his hips up in the air, he's going to overpower me if he's taking on just my arms. So I use my head to try and lift your hips. Absolutely nothing. And I can walk around to a side control if I prefer, or a north-south position. Once he got underneath and got to that baby bolo position, he made the horrible call of just trying to turn. Your opponent has established lever-based rotational control of your body. As he's established his double butterfly hooks and grips on my ankles, I can't turn either direction. And what ended up happening is you try to just turn, it twists you up, and then as Kevin extends, it just drops me down and the guy performs a sweep. Goes straight into attacking with pass. I need to start dealing with these levers. So from here, our preferred is starting to sit down, placing my elbows to the inside of my legs, even up against my opponent's shins if I can, and I'm curling over with monkey grips right around like the pinky toes of my opponent's feet. What I'm looking to do is start trying to cause some internal rotation in his leg, inversion in the ankle, breaking the structure of his legs. From here, I just have my elbows resting on top of my thighs, and my goal is to stop him from being able to extend me. So from here, if Kevin tries to extend me right now, I will actually be able to stay with them and look to start shedding that control. We do it a lot when we're just kind of screwing around with white belts, but this also gives me a counterpoint to my upper body so that if Kevin actually lifts me off the mat and starts extending me up, I can just kind of float with him here as long as I got control of this lever. And now in the no gi, we can get away with this a bit more, but in gi, you will always lose that battle if you just spam this and hold it. But what I'm looking at doing is being in control, as Kevin's trying to extend and lift me away, I'm gonna switch between just pulling and then extending a leg out. So I'll sit here to stabilize myself, and then as I feel someone trying to really push me away, extend this out, and then basically the same thing that we were going over where I'm looking at bringing down to the hip and walking my hips backwards to get into north-south, or even the reverse mount. The biggest mistake people make from there is trying to just run, or especially trying to turn. So don't just try and turn back into your opponent. Establish lever control. Try and shed the hooks from underneath your legs, and try and walk backwards rather than twisting yourself. So what you're playing guard, and you're going to start trying to set up a triangle choke, and have a decent threat going on here. So here you got sleeve and collar control, working to get your foot out towards the bicep. And then you throw the leg over top and you start connecting that triangle. He almost manages to duck out, very nice save, circling the leg out with a bit of a half gramby there. Should be trying to control the posture a bit more. Here you respond too late, you look like you're framing more at the armpit rather than at the elbow. and so. Right there, it looks like you kind of awoken the beast inside this brown belt for a moment here, and we see him turn up the pace a little bit to punish you. So there, I'll just try and control the posture a little bit more. It looks like his head was a little bit shallow, and which made it easy for him to extract both those times. Here, looks like some very nice pressure. Live toes when passing, excellent. Low and controlled with your center of gravity. But right now, he's got that knee shield, bit of a Z guard. But you're establishing chest to chest connection, you're keeping him flat on his back. You're not doing too much active work. Here's, this is nice. But we're gonna have a little bit of an issue here where he's gonna grab your ankle and watch how he just floats your leg so easily. Controls your center of gravity. You take a second to post there with your right arm, and then once you've posted, you for some reason just let it collapse down to your shoulder and you get swept. Matt, you're in a great passing position, and then it all went to hell. Once again, it has to do with center of gravity. So, as I'm in this position against Kevin, what I think was probably happening is you're putting too much weight with your knee into your opponent's abdomen or sternum. And so what ends up happening is I have a strong frame from my knee to my hip and my femur, but this leg becomes light as a lever. And so even though I'm heavy, oh crap, 
Kevin's able to pick me up, start manipulating me, and a whole bunch of bad things ends up happening here. Nothing wrong with taking your leg and really trying to drive it into your opponent, but I have to understand that there's a difference of my center of gravity here, where it's over top of my knee, and see how now this leg becomes really light, I can barely even resist this, to as soon as Kevin starts grabbing underneath me, I bring my hips back. Now lift my leg. He can't, because now it's load bearing, I have my hips and shoulders over top of my ankle. This is no longer labor. The knee's gonna be a bit lighter, he might be able to push the knee more successfully, but that's not causing the same outcome as this did, where your center of gravity got pulled on top of your opponent, and then you end up falling off to the side. So I wanna be in control here. Another thing I can do to help increase pressure is obviously the collar grip, which is now gonna allow me to assist gravity with a pull here. So that now as Kevin tries to lift my leg, no bloody way. This can be with the head, this can even be like sliding down to the shin and controlling with a guillotine. But from here, what I'm just gonna to look to do is control, get a grip on his knee or his, uh, his ankle or the cuff of his pants, something to stop him from being able to follow me. So I'm gonna keep this and look to form a high step out. Now as I'm here, I'm shifting my weight back into my foot, controlling the collar. Here I'll control the cuff of his pants so that I'm able to just keep him from following me or even shred the control. I make sure my knee can get out. So I adjust my hip if necessary. And from here, when my knee is out, I'm just looking to bring my knee up straight up. So it's a high step here into base, knee on belly, establishing control. If the situation kept going as it did with you, where this leg ended up getting lifted on top of him, post that hand sooner. You took a little too long to post the hand. There's no reason you should have fallen down to your shoulders from here. Even from here, if Kevin starts elevating me, I just keep changing my base from here now try and come up. I'll just perform a technical stand-up and withdraw. You ended up posting on your hand and then as your opponent kept on manipulating you, just falling over. There was nothing blocking your hand. Keep on moving it back, recomposing your base. And as you're doing that, you're going to be able to keep looking at threatening with that pass. So even here, as I'm on top and he's controlling my ankle, because I'm framing, I might be able to reach down and block kind of at his knees, and as Kevin's kind of playing around with me here, still look to elevate and high step out of there. So here you're going to try and bring that leg back over to attack the triangle like you did earlier, but he's going to be pretty savvy to this, so your partner's going to be really leaning back, managing the range here, so that even when you bring the leg around to his head here, there's nothing, but you make the very good call of coming up into knee, into a knee ride position, except look where your foot is. It's up by his shoulder, so it's way too close. You're at risk of him possibly grabbing it. You don't have very good base back towards your left butt right now. Your left butt cheek, if he had driven you over, you wouldn't have the uh, post of the right force vector to drive into him. So here, once again, in, in a knee ride position, or knee on belly, Starting to go for a collar choke here. You're gonna make a big mistake with your center of gravity. You lean too much on your left side. So he's able to do an embarrassing reversal on you. So there, just trying to be aware of where your center of gravity is at all times and making sure you have posts to the left side of your body so that you can always recompose your base. Here, working to escape. Very difficult to escape north-south position, especially when someone's got control of one of your arms. They move around into side control. Try and get frames in between you and your opponent. He starts moving to a knee ride position. See how his leg is at a, a better angle here. But he brings it up too close and you're able to grab it. And so basically you did exactly what I was worried he would be able to do to you when the foot comes up too close to the shoulder. So you guys have a nice little exchange here. I hope you found this helpful, Matthew. Please let me know down in the comments if you got any other questions.